Hello and welcome back. So we've managed to insert one record, but uh, this is not ideal. So what we'll do is let's go to operations and go down to where it says truncate, which means empty the table. The reason I like to use truncate instead of just deleting the, uh, the, the row is that the IDs are reset back to one if I use truncate. All right, so let's change things up a little bit so that we don't need to do any of this. So what I'll do is I'll just remove all of this because it's not good having to write uh, queries all the time like this. Instead, what I want to do is this. I know I have a users class here, users model. So what I want is just to say user and say insert and then put the post variable like that. This is all I want to do. That's it. Once I do that, it should insert on its own. So let's see how we can achieve this. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do is let's go to, um, let's go to the user class here. So right in the user class here, I want to create a function. So I'll call this one uh, public function. And this function will be insert. That way I can use this function to do all the dirty work. Dirty work. <laughs> so data here, because we need to insert that data. Now, the first thing I want to do is remove unwanted columns okay so now regardless what columns are in your table there are times when you don't want certain columns to be updated just like the id column you don't want that and maybe sometimes when the date is is updated once you don't want to update it again on a rewrite maybe when you're updating you want to have another column for updating so here you get to choose what columns are allowed. So what we can do is we can create something here, a variable that can that we only need to use within the context of this uh, class. So this one, I'm going to call it allowed columns. So let's set it to an empty array like so, okay? So those are the allowed columns we can add there. Now here, I can go ahead and put those allowed columns. I can copy them from here. And just paste them there. So of course, I will put um, a single quote and a comma and press enter. Okay. So this is an array we're creating with all these items in there. Let's remove ID. We don't want to update that. And then just don't forget to put the final one. And with PHP 8 and above, you can still put a comma at the end of the thing like this so that the next time you want to duplicate, add one more, you can just put that without having to worry about the comma. So, uh, yes. So now we, we've created an array here of the columns that can be updated, okay? Anything else should be ignored. This is what we are telling it. So I'm going to copy this here and come down here and say, so we know that this is going to always be an array. Whether the, there's items here or not, it's going to be either an empty array or have something there but it will always be an array. So what we will do is just run a for each loop. And the variable that we are running through is the, the same one. We have to say this because it's from within this class. Remove that uh, dollar sign. So this allowed columns. Now, it may not exist sometimes. Maybe you forget to put it there. So we will say in case it's not necessary, right? We'll just say if not empty, because not empty, we'll also check if it exists. 
okay and it has something in there so if it's not empty let's do something let me just duplicate that and remove this like so okay so if this is not empty let's loop through it and check we're looping through this data actually that's what we should loop through if not empty allowed columns let's loop through that data the data that we have supplied and then check if a particular key that we want exists in the allowed columns because remember these are keys the email the first name these are not values they are the keys of the array so i'll say if in array so let me put a thing if in array so this is how you check if something if a, a um, a value is within an array. So the needle is what you're looking for. So I'm looking for a particular key. Does it exist in this array, which is the haystack? Now, if it exists, I want to ignore it, right? Because it, it's supposed to be there then. So I only care if it does not exist. So let me put a not exclamation point there to negate this. So what I'm saying, if not in array, so if that particular key, so let's say we are looping through and we go through email, let's check. Is email part of this array? Yes. Is first name? Yes. Is terms part of this array? No. So let's, what do we do with that? Let's remove it. So I'm going to say unset because that's why we remove a value from data. So let's remove that from data. Simple as that. So by the time we get to this point, we should have an array that only contains what we need. So we can test that by just showing the data at this point. So I'm just going to say show and put it there. Okay, so that's all we need for now. Now in the sign up here, I want you to see, uh, this is the insert function. So it's going to echo what it finds there. That's it. So we will see uh, what will happen. So first, what I want is to show everything that is in the post and then let's echo what we've removed and we don't we don't want any errors. So that's fine. So I'm going to refresh again. OK, so it's saying undefined variable data on line 78 in user. So I, I may have missed something. Uh, wait, there's data there. So what's what's going on? data 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 oh sorry my bad i unset the whole data thing oopsie daisy so we want to unset a particular key so we're just unsetting that particular key sorry about that we ended up unsetting the whole array okay so as you can see the original array is like this but we end up with this this is all that we need first name last name email password we don't even have the retype and terms so it's working so once we do that then now let's construct a query okay so let's do query is equal to and you know the query goes like insert into users and then sorry values and then boop boop now, in essence, what we are doing really is we're just getting the uh, the keys, right? That's all we are getting, the keys, uh, because it's going to be email, first name, what, what. And then we're doing exactly the same thing here, only that we are adding a full colon at the beginning of each because we are doing this with the email. Oops, what have I done again? And then when we get to this, we'll do email like that, okay? So we want to create a string that looks something like this without having to actually type it. So I'm going to say query is equal to that. And then let's add to the query. So I'm going to put end it here for now. And then say query dot equals, which means add to. We are concatenating with an equal sign like that. So we want to join it from there. Now here, all we have to do is line up the keys. So I'm going to do this and join the keys in between here separated by a comma so in order to do something like that i want to get the keys from data the remaining keys so i'll do this i'll say 
keys, which is many keys is equal to, there's a function called array keys, conveniently enough. And then when we put an array, it will give us another array of keys only. So I'll get that keys and put here, but this is an array and not a string. So we can use another function called implode. So I'll do here, say implode. Now what implode does is that it gets an array and connects the values together and separated by whatever you specify. In this case, I want to separate by a comma. That's why I'm putting a comma here. The pieces are the, the array itself. So what I'm doing here is I'm imploding the keys into here and then copy that again and implode them here again. So I'm doing exactly the same thing here. So I'm going to copy this and put it there again. Boom, like so, okay? Now the difference is that in here, I want them this, uh, the space in between to have a full colon like that, even at the beginning here. So what I'm essentially doing is telling the keys to implode but with this character in between. So if you think about it, let's say there's an email. So it's going to be like email, and then in between it has this, right? And then password, sorry. And then again in between it has that, uh, and maybe date. So as you can see, I'm putting that there with the comma. So these are considered variables now, but the first one doesn't have one. So that's why I've put one there. So this is what I'm trying to do here. And I can just echo out the final query so that you can see it here. So let's try this again, refresh, and let's echo the final query. So you see the final query is insert into users, first name, last name, email, password, and then values, first name. You see, they have those variable thingies. So if I want to add a date here, let's go to the sign up here. Right before we, um, insert here. I can add a date by just adding it to the post variable. And let's add a new date there. Let's just say date, year, month, day, hour, uh, minute, seconds. So I've added one item to the post variable because you can actually add things to the post variable. And then before we insert. So let's see if it will be part of the query. So if I refresh, and as you can see now, there's date and there's date there, okay? So which is very, very good. Now it means we can insert because if, let me come back here again. So which means we can ignore the date if we want. As long as we don't add it there, then it won't be part of the query, which will avoid um, errors. So here now we can just run this query. So to run this query, remember that uh, we need the, where is this, the DB class, right? We need the DB class. So I'm just going to say DB is equal to new database, and then say DB query. And then in there, we're going to say, um, let's run that query. But we can add some data as well because we have supplied the information that's needed here. So instead of the keys, I want the values now. So in the same way, there's a function here called keys. Conveniently, there's one called values. So we can say array values like that. So this, this function gets all the keys from an array. This one gets all the values from an array. So we can get these values now and put them there like so and that's it so let's see now if we can run this and actually get uh because remember there's no record here yet so if i resend this okay so we get a fatal error invalid parameter number uh parameter was not defined so it's telling me that the params are not uh, equal so why it means the values are more eh, what's going on uh, okay, so what I will do here is echo both. So I will do show query. And then let's show the values now. Okay. 
So let's refresh. Oh, sorry about that. Let's remove this, what's causing the error. Let's refresh, no inserting here. Okay, so insert into first name. So these are the values that are there, but let's look down here. Okay, so the problem that's there is that uh, there's no key value pairing here that's going on, right? The zero, one, two, but it requires these names themselves, like first name to be here, last name to be, so that it knows which value to put where. So that's the problem we've done. So we can't use array values at all. Instead, let's use data itself because we already know at this point it contains the key value pairs that we want. Because if I paste it here, you will see that it does contain that. So first name, email, you see? So that's the right thing we need to add. So I'm going to remove this and add data there. And let's remove that and that. So at this point, this function the insert function is done. So it has made things simple. Let me refresh and resend. And as you can see back here, we have a new record. Very nice. Okay. So things are working well here, but let's do one more thing to make it even better. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video.